So, you're convinced you need a report to send to a donor who just gave a gift, but you don't know what's included in that? Stay tuned to this video for the secret components of writing a good fundraising report. In this video, we're going to address the elements of a good fundraising report. If you haven't already watched the video, The Importance of Writing Fundraising Reports, be sure to check that out at the end after this video. I address the reasons why your donors want and need a good fundraising report. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofit organizations increase their income and become fully funded. So whether you're a seasoned development and fundraising expert, new to development and fundraising, or somewhere in between, this video, this channel, is for you. The six elements of a good report are as follows. Number one, summary of activity since the last report. Every good report is clear, concise, and long enough to cover the facts, but not too long to bore the donor to death. A good report is sent out one or two times a year, Good reports contain the progress of a project from the date the gift was given to the date the project is completed. The first report should contain progresses that have been made since the gift was given. Each report after that should be a summary of what was achieved since the last report, and so on until the project is completed and all can celebrate. Number two, recent realities, advances, and victories. Reports are frequent and honest. Each report needs to contain a reminder of the goals and objectives and then paint the honest and upfront realities. One reality is the project is doing better than planned or at least going as planned. However, another version might be the project is not going as planned or that it's going much worse. Whatever the version, we must be honest and upfront with the donor. Some leaders are hesitant to share progress in an upfront manner when reality is negative. That's a big mistake. Many donors are business people, and they know that not every good idea is achieved. Plans fail. That doesn't mean that the plan wasn't good. It means that for various reasons, people and money usually, implementation of the plan was not achieved. But know this, donors are understanding of failure. What donors are less than understanding about is us not learning from our mistakes and our failures. There's an old story from a Fortune 500 company. A young executive made a major mistake that cost the company $2 million. The rest of the day, he was certain the company would let him go as a result of that mistake. At the end of the day, the vice president of the company called him into his office to discuss the situation. The young executive immediately began to apologize and said, I'd understand it if you needed to fire me. But instead, the vice president said, why would we fire you? We just spent $2 million on your education. That vice president showed the young executive that he was valued. And that young executive learned from his mistake and went on to become very productive for that company. In your case, if you made progress, achieved goals, celebrate those victories. Don't be afraid to toot your own horn if you made a significant step towards completing your project. Number three, barriers or setbacks. As you discuss progress, be sure to address the speed bumps along the pathway towards your goals and your objectives. Have you run into obstacles to achieving a particular goal on the path to completion? Are you able to go around those barriers or through those barriers? Or will those barriers hinder you from achieving your objective? Or did you receive a setback? And was that minor or major? It's not unusual for an organization to take two steps forward and one step backward. However, one step forward and two step backward could be a problem. If you aren't gaining ground, it might be time to admit that the project might not be completed. Face reality and cut your losses before it's too late, before you lose credibility with your staff, volunteer, or donors. A donor needs to hear about those barriers or setbacks so they can not be surprised if you have one day let them know that the project will never see completion. 
When I've been honest with a partner, they've usually understood and even thanked me for my honesty. But I've also had donors use their influence and expertise or resources to help me eliminate the barrier or overcome a setback. Number four, how funding has been used to accomplish the objective. Reaching key goals and objectives or demarcation points are cause for celebration. Quite possibly, lives of individual people are changed, and at a minimum, steps are taken to get closer to completion of the project. Clearly state how money was used and spent along the way and what things specifically were accomplished. Don't stoop to generalities in addressing accomplishments. Highlight and report on the people and places that were impacted and how things were changed from before there was funding. Number five, illustrations of changed lives do the gift. In addition to clearly stating accomplishments, specifically point out lives that were changed and address before and after circumstances. What was someone's like life before they were part of our program, before they received our product, and before they got involved with our organization? And then highlight what happened in their life or to them after that involvement in their life and tie those changes back to the donor's gift and the impact that it made. Our organization sees dramatic changes in the lives of millions of individuals each year. We report on those changes collectively and individually. We report on the millions that are changed, but we also report on Mario and Maria whose life was changed. Remember, people give to people justified by the cause. Number six, specific prayer requests if you're a faith-based organization. If you're a faith-based organization, donors love praying for the investments that they made in you, your organization, and those lives change the result of their gift. For many, prayer is active involvement as impactful, if not more impactful, than their gift. Prayer requests are most appreciated when they're specific and targeted in nature. List the name of a recipient of the product or service. List what you're hoping to accomplish as a result of those prayers. If you hope to bring fresh water to a village in Africa this month, share the village and what you hope to see happen as a result of the fresh water. Those are the six key elements of a good fundraising report. Understanding these elements will give you that edge, that cut above that you can have over other nonprofits out there. Add or improve your reports now and see your income soar. The objective of this channel is to help you greatly increase income for your nonprofit organization. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things that you especially liked or if there's topics you'd like me to address in the future. For videos similar to this, check out the video and playlist listed above. To watch other videos related to nonprofit fundraising, go out to Development Effectiveness Strategies channel. If you have fundraising questions, then our weekly broadcast, Jim and Java program, is for you. Submit your questions on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And as always, I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you.